I am Amanda Mitchell and this is a BB Betancourt. And before we start our chat today, I'd like to say that the Casting Guild of Australia would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections with to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, uh, and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. So, BB. It is such Hello. a pleasure to finally meet you. <laughs> Tell us where you are. Um, I am in Prague at the moment, actually. <laughs> and what are you doing in Prague? I'm just visiting. <laughs> Travelling the world because you can now. No, oh, which is lovely. It's very nice. Strange, but nice. Good. Well, I'm glad that you are out adventuring the world. We're very jealous here in Australia. Um, but you wouldn't be far into it because, from my understanding, you grew up in L.A., is that correct, and moved to Australia, and you kind of live between the two? Yeah, I was born in Sydney, actually, and then okay. moved to the States when I was a bub and lived in Boston for a bit and then L.A. for a bit and then back to Australia when I was 14 and went to high school there and pretty much lived there for like 10 years all right and now you travel between the two yeah I'm generally between LA and Australia cool and you have two parents uh, who are beautiful musicians tell us how you journeyed into acting um well I mean I guess I think they, you know my parents are very creative people so I suppose I was around creatives since I was a child um, and to be honest the reason why I sort of fell into it was a couple reasons the first one being I played Mrs. Claus in a, in a school play when I was in like second or third grade and I was this is amazing this feels so good and and, um, and I really also loved reading so much so I just loved books. I loved books so much. And I kind of was like, this is a way I can be in books this is a way I can go into different worlds and sort of live in these um, characters in these worlds. And that's sort of naturally how it happened. So I just kind of kept doing it at school. And yeah. Oh, cool. And then when you graduated high school, how did you when did you take that formal approach to, OK, this is something that I'm going to seriously look into? Was there anything yeah. else in between that you were kind of going like, oh, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that? No, it's funny. There is definitely, that was sort of it for me. I never really thought about anything else. And I just kind of was like, yep, this is my path. This is what I'm going to do. Um, I didn't really know how to do that at all. So I just sort of was like, had this belief and that's it. And then kind of just kept going. And, um, you know, I dabbled, I love music as well. So that was definitely, and that's just like a massive part of my life. But for me, acting was always going to be what I was going to do. And I just sort of auditioned for a play and then did this play with ATYP, which was really fun. And then I auditioned for The Dry and that my audition for The Dry was what also got me my agent. And it was my first audition also. So that was sort of a wild experience to get that. Um, I also yeah. hear that your agent was present at the ATYP uh, performance that you gave as well. Yeah, so. yeah it was. I was going to invite her there and um you know I just I, I really wanted her actually for a couple of years and I was like all right how do I get Leanne how do I get United and and um just by chance Jane Norris who was casting the dry sort of assumed she was my agent and um I was like thank you <laughs> <laughs> that's enough and that's enough that, yeah thank you and through that I she sort of facilitated that audition and then ended up offering me representation and I thought if I don't get this movie it's great I got the agent I wanted and then I ended up getting the movie so oh that's amazing and then after that you uh, stayed in Australia or you went back or I've been back and forth um I was in us I was in LA when you know the world sort of stopped, turned up <laughs> and, stopped and I was kind of there for like five months and then I got Eden which brought me back home which was so lovely and mm -hmm. such a beautiful gift in that crazy time yeah cool and what would you say is 
something, oh, I mean, you know, like not a goal necessarily, but what would your idea of like a really great role be? Or like, what would you want to accomplish in the next few years? Like, what are you striving for now? What's your ne next big step? Um, it's so funny because I, I, I try to remain quite open because I never would have guessed any of the things I've done so far. So I, I really like to remain open and open to everything. I would love to try my hand at some funny stuff and do a bit of comedy. And I'm a massive fantasy nerd. So put me in a corset and put me in a field with some pointy ears and I'll be happy. You know, like I really, I'm, I'm sort of game for anything. And, you know, I'd love to try my hand at all things. I've, I've tend to, tended to play sort of, heavy characters so be nice for my family to be able to watch something that puts a smile on their face <laughs> and how do you keep up with your skill set like how do you have how did you get it did you do any training did you just kind of jump into atyp like has it all been kind of organic it sounds like you do tend to go with the flow and just follow your senses and instincts yeah, I, i really One of my saving graces when I moved back to Australia was ATYP. I started there before I started going to school. It sort of happened in the summer. Mm -hmm. And that was really helpful to me to have sort of a community and a place where I could go and, I don't know, really be myself, I suppose, because starting a new school, moving to a different country is really nerve wracking. So I could go to ATYP and sort of just be myself and, you know, be creative. And then um, when I finished school, I did NIDA for a year. I did a screen acting course at NIDA. And from there, I just got an email to audition for the play and then went and did that. But in between that, I sort of, I mean, it was just consuming as much art as I could. So watching a lot of films, reading a lot of books and um, yeah. Mm, nice. Well, that leads me on to, I guess, my next question, which is, what would you say because obviously you'd have a lot of actors watching this interview who would look at your career to date and be incredibly um impressed and be inspired by i'm sure what would what advice would you give to them in terms of starting out and uh, what steps to take they could they might not be practical they could just be following your heart or what would your advice be I think that, honestly, just resilience. And when you're starting out, I think know who you are and don't take things so personally and use every opportunity that you have and everything that you come up against as a learning experience. And something that even just helps me for auditions are is to just it's yours, the role is yours for that small amount of time that you get to put this audition down and enjoy it and treat it as yours and um, get what you can out of it, you know, because it is yours for the five minutes or whatever. It's so true. It's so true. And that's what we're looking for is for you to take ownership of it in that moment and not be kind of thinking about getting it. Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, You see plays that are sort of rebirthed every couple of years on, on stage. And I think you look at auditions like that. Maybe somebody else will play that role down the line and sort of get to extend the run of it in a show or whatever you're going for. But for that five minutes, that's for you and to enjoy it. And in terms of auditions, I'm curious because I think this is something also actors in Australia who haven't actually had the LA experience would be curious about how you as an actor feel um, in the room or in an audition situation in LA versus in an audition situation in Australia because they're quite different. It is. It's really different. And it really surprised me, actually. And but I mean, Fortunately or unfortunately, however you look at it, when I started going in the room in LA was sort of when everything shut down. So I've done probably more tapes in my life than oh, being tapes, in the room. Yeah. I've definitely done more tapes. Um, but it is interesting. It's really different. I think, I think Australia is definitely a little more conversational 
uh, on a personal level, just because I think it's quite small, we're a bit small. So you sort of, you see each other a lot more. Um, it's a little bit more nurturing. Yeah, it's a little bit more nurturing. I think LA is interesting because you're sort of in and out and you don't have any clue how you went at all. Like you're just like, everyone's very, very uh, nice here. Almost a little too nice. <laughs> Yeah, I once um, heard um, like I once heard someone say that you you'd win an award for ordering a glass of water in LA. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so yeah, amazing. God, whereas yeah. Ozzy was kind of great in the sense you're just like great, thanks. You know, yeah. <laughs> like cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's very very different experiences. It's interesting. Cool. Well, I think, honestly, that it's been such a lovely chat with you. I don't know if there's anything else that you want to share about yourself or with other actors who are looking at you and hoping that next year they will become a rising star for the CGA, um, because I think it is actually quite a, a special thing. So massive congrats to you. You, you should be really proud. I, I, it's, it's been a lovely, lovely surprise and very unexpected. Very nice. So. Cool. Um, well, enjoy. Yeah. Sorry. Go. <laughs> <laughs> go. No, share. I, share your wisdom. <laughs> I, I, oh gosh, wisdom. Uh, um, I don't really have. You know, I don't really have any wisdom because, to be honest, I'm still, I'm still trying to work it all out. And I think you sort of have to. There really is no method to this madness. You have to really find your own way and do not compare yourself to other people's journeys because it's absolutely useless and just not helpful and everyone is so different. And also like, I think there's a strange um, competitiveness that exists within this industry between actors. And I also think that's a bit useless because everyone's so different. My friend and I could go for the same thing, interpret something in the same exact way and give completely different performances. So some, some other advice I'd give is try to actually be kind to one another and nurture one another and help each other up. I've made some really immensely beautiful relationships with other actors and we're constantly going for the same stuff and helping each other because a win for one is a win for all. So, you know, I think drive is good, but competing isn't necessarily um, a very positive way to exist in, in this industry. And I think, yeah. Don't know where I was going with that, but there you go. No, I think it all feeds into interesting that you say about resilience because it is much more about the sustainability and longevity of, you know, it's it's like a marathon. So it and, and it's good to not make you you can't make it about other people um and put your energy into other people. You have to focus on yourself and nurture yourself and take care of your mental health and your physical health and all those things and and it's really easy to slip into the trap of, of looking at other people and, and feeling bad in comparison. And I just think, man, this, this industry and this job is hard enough. And, um, you know, it's, it's really tough. And it's, a lot of it is out of your control as an actor. You're sort of waiting for other people to put something in your hand. You're going for your dream job four times a week and not even getting no's. It's just, you're not even hearing about it. So I think it, anything that's in your control, such as your attitude and your relationships, I think you've got to take those things and really nurture it. Well, I definitely think those are wise words. So thank you for sharing <laughs> <laughs> and what are you going to do today in Prague I'm so jealous oh it's lovely it's very beautiful um I mean it's a rainy day so it's looking like it's going to be a cup of tea and bed or movies or something today um which I'm not mad about it seems like kind of a perfect day perfect for day me, so. exactly <laughs> Well, enjoy. It was such yeah. a pleasure to finally meet you because we haven't had the opportunity. So thank you. And thank you for taking the time. And we look forward to welcoming you back to Australia for your next gig. I guess I can't wait to come home. Great. Thanks, Phoebe. Bye. Bye. Bye.